Today I'm doing an unboxing, walkthrough, and setup of the brand new Logitech MX Creative Console. This is a dual device system that comes with both a keypad and a dial pad with basically unlimited customization. I'm super excited to show you guys this one, but before we continue, I do want to say that Logitech sent me this device early and is sponsoring this video, but most of that is just to get awareness out to you about this new product. They're not forcing me to say anything, and all these thoughts and the setup is all completely my own. On the front of the box, you could see the MX Creative Console, a new product by Logitech, and then you could see a preview of that keypad and a preview of the dial pad. Then on the side here, we have some information on what you need. And then on the back here, you could see just a little generic setup on how they have it. And it's worthy to note that this does come with three months of Adobe Creative Cloud, which is great because that's a lot of value right there without even getting into the devices. And then on the final side here, it tells you a little more about what's in the box. After taking the outer box out, we're left with these inner box. And this box is pretty cool. I have opened this up before, so it's not a completely new unboxing, but this is generally what you're gonna see. On the right here, we have the keypad, and on the left here, we have the dial pad. So from what I've been told by Logitech, the dial pad doesn't take a lot of battery. And for that reason, this is gonna connect directly to your computer with Bluetooth. I actually took the AAAs that already came with this and have them installed, but you would get a fresh set of AAAs inside of the package. On the front of the dial pad, it's a very nice system. It's actually pretty ergonomic. Most people will be using it with their left hand, and when you have it like that, you have good access to the main dial, and then your fingers can easily access the other buttons and the other dial wheel. So it's very easy to control this device, and like I said, it's very ergonomic, and I really enjoy the dial pad so far. Putting that dial pad to the side now, we can take a look at the keypad. Now the keypad is very cool because all nine of these buttons can illuminate and display any icon that you want. And then on the bottom left here, there are two arrows to shift through the pages, which you'll see later. This device actually is going to consume a good amount of power because of those displays. And Logitech has decided to go with a USB-C to USB-C cable that comes with the device. And this will plug in to power this device. Next up in the box, there's just some paperwork about that Adobe Creative Cloud subscription and other information. And then finally, there is a little stand that is actually used for the keypad. So you can put the keypad on the stand here and it makes it a little more presentable and easy to see those keys if the device is a little far away from you. This is everything that is inside of the box. There might be a little more plastic and wrap in when you get yours new, but that's kind of what it looks like when you're unboxing after you've used the device for a month. So that is the unboxing of the MX Creative Console. Now let's jump into the setup. So connecting these devices to your computer should be very easy. You are going to download Logi Options Plus, and this is the main hub that is gonna control your Logitech devices. If you have other devices such as a mouse or a keyboard, then this is gonna be the same software and it's gonna be very easy for you. If you don't have it, then just download it and once that's finished downloading, we can start connecting these devices. To connect the dial pad to the computer, you're just gonna go to the top right of the device and you're gonna turn that on. Once you switch that switch on, you're just gonna go into your system settings, you're gonna look at Bluetooth devices, and you're gonna connect this device. And then the much easier device to connect is the keypad. You're gonna plug one end of the USB-C cable into the keypad, and you're gonna take the other end and just plug that into your device of choice. Once that's done, there might be some system settings popping up. Just make sure to allow everything and go through this process slowly. Don't accidentally deny or mess anything up here because it might be a little weird to set up if you skip through some of these. Just make sure you're allowing the permissions correctly so these devices can operate on your system. Once all that's done, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open Logi Options Plus here. So if everything's done correctly, you can see all the devices that you have previously connected. For me, it's my inactive keyboard, my MX Master 3S, which is right here. And then we have 
the keypad and the dial pad. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the dial pad. When you first get into the MX Creative dial pad settings page, you can see four menu items on the side, but we really only need to pay attention to two of them. The first one is the dial and roller, and here we can set the speeds of both the dial and the roller and the direction. For me, I set the speed to 50 and the direction to standard on this. And then for the dial, I actually set the speed to five and the scroll direction to counterclockwise. It might seem a little weird, but that's just what works for me. And the good thing about these devices is you can set them up however you like them. If you like them faster or slower, you can set it up. This is just what worked for me. You don't have to copy these settings. I'm just gonna show you the potential that these devices have. Then honestly, where all of the actual magic happens is in the buttons page. And in here we click this to customize buttons where we are greeted with this giant screen where we can see all the buttons. So right here, this is the default profile and you could see that there are standard stuff such as undo, redo, scroll, there's a contextual dial, which at first is for system volume. There's the escape key. And then there's something confusing here, which actually says show action reigns. There is a new thing inside of the Logitech software. You don't really get two devices. You get two devices and a brand new action reign. So if you press this button on the dial pad, it actually opens up this actions reign, which is also fully customizable. So. We'll be going over that action rain a little bit later, but just know you get two hard devices and then one software action rain. It's, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go over how I actually set up my dial pad, and then I'm gonna show you how to set up just a blank dial pad and add some stuff to it. But like I said, this is the default profile, and then we're gonna hop into my profile. And really what I wanted to do here is I wanted to mimic my trackpad for when I have this docked. And some of the most important things for me are jumping from screen to screen. So on these buttons, I have move left a space in Mac and move right a space for the Mac. And this really just lets me jump between full screen options. And then I do a lot of photo editing, obviously. And for that reason, I have brackets set here, which allows me to change my brushes in the apps. And then I have contextual set to zoom so I can zoom in on my photos easily. It makes it really easy to edit photos this way and also navigate between other apps while I'm editing. And then you can see on the bottom here, I opted out of the actions rain and I went for launch pad and mission control. This just launches into my apps really easily and it's, it's honestly great. I could just jump into mission control here. I could jump into my launch pad and just see a ton of stuff. So that's how I have it set up and now let me show you how to set up a blank profile so you can see the potential of this device. So up here, you can add a profile and it's really interesting. You can add a general profile, which is like the default one that we saw at first, or you can add an application specific profile. So when you switch to that application, you can actually have that profile just automatically reassigned to the device. So if you want something for Lightroom, for Photoshop, or for Final Cut, Premiere, anything that it is, you can set that application profile here. But for this, I mean, it's just too much to go over. Really, this device has so much potential. I'm just gonna go over a general blank profile. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go with a blank profile. As you can see, as more people create their profiles, they can throw them on Marketplace. So we're gonna start with a blank profile here and we're just gonna name it test. And for this test, you could see that we can now add actions to all of these buttons. And up here, you could see we have options to choose between all actions. You could choose between the OS system or just for the dial pad. There is a lot we can choose from here. So when you are setting up one of these devices, all of these three devices are going to be the same, the dial pad, the keypad, and the actions ring. You're just going to have this menu over here, which can be OS specific or application specific. And you have these drop down menus, and then you could drag these on to any action. So you can see for these buttons right here, we now have these set to volume down and volume up. And if we want to switch these for some reason, we could just swap them. And now this will be volume up. This will be volume down. 
and you can see it's very, very easy. One of the most helpful things I think is open application. You can do this and then select any application on your system. And then that is just going to launch it quickly. Really, there's endless options here and anything that you can keybind, you can turn into a macro and you can program to this dial. You can really get advanced with this or keep it simple. You can see there's multi-action macros here, multi-toggles. You can create your own dial adjustments. Uh, and if we just want to take a look at that, because it's kind of crazy, you could see that for the left turn, you can set something. And this is where I was setting the brackets. And then for the right turn, you could set something. And then you could see we've just created a new thing. And that's how I was creating my brackets action. So if we go in there, this will now add brackets and you can control your brush. So as you can see, whenever you want, you can go between these profiles. And as quick as you can go between these profiles is as quick as the device will set. So as soon as you swap that, it will just turn into that new thing right away. There's no lag. And then if you don't like a profile you created, you can go ahead and remove that. You can also go ahead and export your profiles to make sure that you don't lose them. For me, I'm just going to name this Kyler Dialpad. Then I'm going to make sure I never lose this profile. So I'm going to set this back to my profile and then we're going to hop out of this and we're going to go take a look at the other device. Okay, so we're jumping into the keypad now and as you can see, there are three things on the side here and once again, you only need to know the top two really. So the second one from the top is just the brightness. I have this set all the way to the max brightness. I just love the way that this looks on my desk. and I love the display that this has. It's honestly very beautiful. And then the next thing is the same thing. We're going to go into keys and customize these keys. And I'm just going to hold this up here so you can take a look. It's really beautiful how they have this. I actually have some of my own profiles in this. I have my Kyler profile, which is just for me. I have this set up to just open up my three main editing apps, Lightroom, Classic, Photoshop, and Final Cut Pro. And then the default profile has a lot of other things that's helpful for anyone. You can do play pause, toggle mute, open options plus, emojis, screen brightness, screenshots, finder. And then you could see there are options to add more things here. You can add basically an infinite amount of pages. I will show you my final cut profile quick, which is in like an eight step program of walking through my projects. So you can see I have this set up for organizing my files, coloring, audio, trimming, sorting, effects, checks, and then finally exporting. So I made a really long profile for Final Cut Pro. It took me a better part of a day, but it improved my workflow for getting videos out a ton. We're going to go back to the default here and take a look at that. So once again, there are a ton of things that you can add here. And once we go over to the side here, open application is great. You go ahead here and make a button for Chrome. That is fantastic. There are some cool stuff here for like date and time. Over here, you could put the date and you could see you could have this display kind of like a clock. I really think this is where the marketplace will shine. Once someone creates some really cool keys for this system, it's going to be such a great desk accessory to really lighten up the desk. So I just realized that I didn't create a test profile before altering this default. And what you can go is you can just go ahead and delete these actions or just go ahead and delete this page and get it back to the default. Like I said, you could go back up to this default and just remove it here. And then you can add it in again with this default profile. It's always going to be there. I kept the dial pad very simple because I want the keypad to shine on its own. And it shines because of those application profiles. As you can see, the profile that I created for my final cut is eight pages long that I have to scroll through. As you can see, it takes a lot, but you can see the colors as I scroll through it. But there are actually already preset created ones for the Adobe apps. You can go in here and go into Lightroom Classic. And you can see they have Quick and Simple Lightroom. They have Essentials Lightroom. They have the default. They have Develop Super User Lightroom. But if you love the program, 
this is where you'd want to go and you could take a look at what they have here and then you can just add this profile this is going to download the Lightroom profile for you and it actually installs it into Lightroom Classic so when you open Lightroom up it's just going to open up this profile and it's going to be ready to go you can add more profiles we can come in here we can add one for Photoshop there's paths and vectors essentials retouch I like to do retouch I'm just going to add that in right now you can see that's installing into my application of choice and like I said if you have a profile like me with Lightroom Photoshop Final Cut when I click that Final Cut button it launches my Final Cut profile I click the Photoshop button it launches my Photoshop profile it's very very smooth and this is just for me when I'm editing my photos editing my videos this doesn't take into account that if you know other devices out there devices like this can be used as a soundboard they can be used as a streaming helping tool as long as you're creative and you have time or if someone else is creative in time and they give you the profile or put it on marketplace you can use this in an infinite amount of ways and then like i said if someone gives you a profile or you find a profile that you want you can import it here and that will put it directly onto your system to be used with these devices and then if you don't like that profile anymore you can come into it you can go ahead and delete some of the actions that you don't like you can go take a look at some of the other actions you see they basically have almost everything inside of the app here you could just throw them in you can set up however you like you only have to put one button on a page if you want to it's really up to you to set it up however you like okay i hope this has been pretty simple to understand so far obviously i'd love to walk through everything here but this video will be hours and hours long maybe if you have got your hands on the device or use another system and know some macros leave them down in the comments to let people know what the most helpful tools have been for you on a device like this and then the last thing that I want to go over is that software that actions rain so the way that they set this up they just had some simple stuff play pause next track previous track open Google reply with chat GBT and obviously you could come in here throw in some other stuff I honestly like the stopwatch that they had it's kind of good for like a Pomodoro timer so you could throw it on there me personally I am so satisfied with the dial pad and keypad that if we take a look at my profile I don't have anything on it I don't honestly use the actions ring because I just have everything that I need on my mouse on my dial pad and on my keypad and that's is fine because that's how it works for me and in the future I may honestly use the action ring to add some new stuff that I don't want on these devices but that's the great thing about this is this system can grow with you it can shrink with you it can expand to however you like it for me this solution is not one that I'm just gonna come in and be like it's completely done it's one that develops over time because this is a creative system when you get a new application you can add new profiles for that you could add new keybinds when you don't want to use the dial pad like a mouse and you want to use it like a program specific tool you can do that too for me i'm really keeping it simple here i have the actions bar turned off i have the dial pad acting like a mouse pad for when i dock my computer and then i have the keypad acting like my all-in-one macro source and it's great i honestly love the system so far so that's my walkthrough of the logitech mx creative console Honestly, it's a great system and I'm excited to grow with it. But anyway, I hope you learned something new and saw a way that this system could work for you. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one.